Ladies and gentlemen, this particular story is an update and I think most people have already heard about it, but I did want to at least make sure that I posted kind of my thoughts and share with our people that maybe haven't already seen this. But one of the individuals, one out of four of the individuals who played a role in the death of George Floyd, the man out of Houston, Texas, went to trial. He is actually going to be sentenced here pretty soon. Okay. But they did at least go to trial and they um, were able to convict him on the three charges. So he's guilty on all charges. So you guys can post that in the chat. As you can see from this picture, people around the country, people around the state, around the world were ecstatic about this. Like they make it seem like, like this is just the biggest victory ever. And it's not, <laughs> we don't even like they're, they're celebrating, but we don't have how many years he's going to be in prison yet. And there's still more people that need to be tried for the roles that they played in this. So don't get too happy about winning a battle when you're trying to secure a win in the war. Now let's talk about this. Derek Chaffin, who you see on the right hand side of my screen, faces a maximum of 40 years in prison following his conviction today for killing George Floyd during a botched arrest in Minneapolis. I don't know why I said Houston, but maybe it's just because I know that he's associated with the uh, people in Houston. And I saw him in some music videos in Houston, but let's move on. So Derek Chaffin could get up to four decades behind bars for the top count of second degree murder. The second, the second count of third degree murder carries a penalty of up to 25 years, but he will only be sentenced on the top count as per state law, Samuel McLeod said, who has practiced criminal law in Minnesota for 44 years. The third count he was convicted of, of second degree manslaughter carries a minimum of 10 years, but he also will not face sentencing on that count as per state law. While second degree murder carries a statutory maximum of 40 years in the state, Chaffin will likely face far less time when he is sentenced as per state, as per state sentencing guidelines. The guidelines call for about 12 years in prison for Chaffin, but prosecutors have asked for an upward departure from that, which could add a number of years to the sentence, former prosecutor Susan Gartner said. I want y'all to bookmark that. Why, everybody's trying to count this as a win. A jury convicted Chaffin today on all counts after deliberating for a little more than 10 hours. Chaffin killed George Floyd in May of 2020 by kneeling on his neck for more than nine, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, nine minutes on a human's neck during an arrest on many, on, on, in a Minneapolis street. The former cop's attorney had argued he properly restrained Floyd, who was resisting and under the influence of drugs during the incident. Chaffin was remanded into custody after the verdict was handed down and he will face sentencing in approximately eight weeks. So just about two months. Experts said he'll likely be held in protective custody or potentially even serve time out of state. At sentencing, he will likely be committed to the custody of the Minnesota Commissioner of Corrections and could end up serving his time at a number of state facilities, a former Twin City prosecutor said Tuesday. The former cop will likely pass through Minnesota State Prison in St. Cloud, said Samuel Edmonds, who currently works as a defense attorney in Minneapolis. Let me ask you guys a question. Who are listening to my voice right now, please click the thumbs up, share this stream, let more people know that we're live talking about this story. I wanna know from you guys who are listening. How many of you guys believe that this is a victory? This is a W. How many of you guys believe that this is a victory and you are happy with what he's been charged with and what he's been convicted with. He, he might not get the full 40 years. I think he should definitely get 
the full 40 years. As a matter of fact, however old George Floyd was, I think that's how many years that this dude should get minimum in prison. But that's just my personal opinion. I know my, my opinion is not the law. But the way that they handled this was just wrong in so many ways. I'm not going to talk about what George Floyd did right or wrong or whatever the case is. When it comes to authority, authority is trained to be able to handle these difficult situations. And if they don't have enough training after all these damn years then maybe we need to have some more training, some more guidelines, something, because out of all the data that we have, I would think at this point, and y'all know I normally don't even talk about this type of thing. I think that we have to have, we have to have, I don't even know how you describe it, better training, better common sense. Maybe you get desensitized after you just see bad person after bad person after bad person your entire career and maybe you just flat out don't give a crap anymore but I think that every single life matters and I believe that if you take a life or put a life in jeopardy you better damn well make sure that you had no other choice I don't think that's what happened here not with that many officers involved not with this man already being handcuffed where, would it, where the hell was he going to go? He did not need to be restrained in that fashion, that harshly. And, and, I'm, and I'm pretty sure the world would totally agree that the way that this was handled was absolute crap on all of the officers' parts that were involved in this situation. Regardless of what you feel about his record, how he behaved, or anything, Criminals, like I like, like I like to say, stupid is as stupid thugs. You should be trained to know how to deal with thugs when that's what you get paid to do. Does that make sense? You are literally training to deal with thugs and criminals. That is the essence of your job is to enforce the law, even though people want to say that it's their job to serve and protect. Their job is to enforce the laws that are on the books. Enforcing the law should not equate to this many murders. And I think that bringing this type of thing to their attention should actually be like a big old red flag and be like, yo, maybe we need to think about this a little more critically, especially when you have four and five and six and seven police officers on top of one man. He's already been apprehended. I just don't understand. If you look at this picture, any level of common sense would tell your ass, you gotta be a damn fool to sit there on somebody's jugular veins like that. Like, come on. That's not right. It's not common six. It's not common sense. If it is policy, anybody who wrote that policy needs they ass whooped. That should never be on the books to sit there and constrain somebody with your knee on their freaking veins where they breathe. You might as well tell, you might as well should have told the dude that it's in the policy to put your, to put your knee on top of his mouth and his nose. That's equivalent That's equivalent to the same thing. Common sense should tell you, even if it is in policy, it might not be necessary this time. I'm sorry, but it's just like, once a life is taken, you can't go in reverse. You can't fix this. This man ain't never coming back. This man will never get a chance at redemption. But Chaffin will. Think about that. However many years he gets in prison, as long as he don't pass away from natural causes or whatever the case is, when he gets out of prison, once he does his time, he will get a second chance. George Floyd won't. Does anybody disagree with what the hell I just said? 
I think I stand pretty clear on that because you guys know that I take a strong stance against thugs and thug behavior. This shirt says, hashtag, when you date thugs, you date death. I don't like thugs. I am against all thugs and non-law abiding activity, especially when it puts our children at risk. There still has to be a level of decorum because that's the job that this butthead signed up for. That's the contract that you signed to enforce the law. They also said that most of the inmates start there and then most will get transferred to a different facility around the state, according to Edmund, who told the Post. There are several prisons across Minnesota that house inmates after they've been sentenced. He added that a local judge will not, I repeat, will not have authority over where an inmate is placed once they are turned over to correction officials. So that's something to look out for. But again, I want you guys to remember, this is not a real victory. You still have to wait for the sentencing, see if it's fair and if it's just, which I'm sure they're not gonna give him the maximum amount of time, which I think he needs probably more time than that. But this is only one person out of four. There's more work to be done. So don't get your happy asses all up and be cheering and joyful and celebrating and going out for drinks and post it on Facebook. I see too many people already too happy. You get too damn happy about nothing. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 USC 107. And just to be clear, I'm not against police at all. I'm against people who break the law including police and thugs and anybody. I'm against all people who break the law, all right? So I ain't one of them people, but let's get it. Members of the jury, I understand you have a verdict. And let me say this, for the people who are saying what George Floyd did as a criminal does matter, it should matter in court, not dead in the street. Is that not what our laws are meant to do? Judge by 12, not carried by six. We don't hold court in the streets. We hold court in court in front of a judge. The judge will decide our ultimate fate and decide what we did and how bad it was. Hopefully that makes sense. So if it does matter, it should have mattered in court, not dead in the street from laying on somebody's damn neck. Come on. Members of the jury, I will now read the verdict says they will appear in the permanent records of the 4th Judicial District. State of Minnesota, County of Hennepin, District Court, 4th Judicial District. State of Minnesota Plaintiff versus Derek Michael Chauvin, Defendant. Verdict, count one. We got to stop making this a black and white thing, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. Stop making it a black and white thing. We are Americans, and Americans need to demand their rights because I want to remind you guys that even though this was a black man who might've done something wrong, the majority of us have family members, if not ourselves, who have done things wrong. What if it was you that stole something small or did something small or did anything that caused the police to apprehend you and they decide to restrain you because you might've jerked or acted up or got irate or whatever the case is and they decide to lay down on your family member's neck on your neck or anybody else's. What if it was you? Black, white, Asian, Chinese, black, white, Middle Eastern, Indian. Think about that for a moment. It could be you. 
it happens just the same with black people as it do with white people, even though they don't refer to it in the news that much. Think about that for a moment. What if it was one of your loved ones? We all should be mad when people we pay to enforce the law hold court in the streets. Hope I'm clear about that. Court file number 27, CR 20-12646. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021 at 1 44 p.m. Signed juror four person, juror number 19. I guess some people in the chat acting like they don't have people who use drugs in their family, people who are alcoholics in their family, people who have mental issues in their family. Is that, is that, is that what y'all trying to tell me? Y'all don't have no family members that have issues that might be criminals? Might have done some fraud. Might have might have stolen something. Just just the majority of people in the chat, I guess, don't know anybody who shares their skin color, shares their culture, who have done something illegal. Okay. All right. Same caption, verdict count two. Okay. We the jury in the above entitled matter as to count two. Third degree murder, perpetrating an eminently dangerous act, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021 at 1.45 p.m. Signed by jury four person, juror number 19. Same caption, verdict count three. We the jury in the above entitled matter as to count three, second degree manslaughter, culpable negligence, creating an unreasonable risk. Find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021 at 1.45 p.m. Jury four person, 019. Members of the jury, I'm now going to ask you individually if these are your true and correct verdicts. Please respond yes or no. Juror number two, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number nine, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 19, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 27, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 44, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 52, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 55, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 79, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 85, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 89, is this your, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 91, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror now, y'all got to remember, we're being divided in this country. We got more stuff in common than we do different. We have to stop looking at this so differently, y'all, okay? We got so much more in common than we do different. Number 92, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Are these your verdicts, so say you want, so say you all? Yes. 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 Members of the jury, I find that uh, the verdicts as read reflect the will of the jury and will be filed accordingly. I have to thank you on behalf of the people of the state of Minnesota for not only jury service, but heavy duty jury service. What I'm going to ask you to do now is to follow the deputy back into your usual room and I will join you in a few minutes to answer questions and to advise you further. So all rise for the jury. All right. I think they cut and they're coming back. All right, be seated. All right, yep, here we go. With the guilty verdicts returned, we're gonna have uh, Blakely, you may file a uh, written argument as to Blakely factors within one week. The court will issue findings on the Blakely factors, the factual findings, one week after that. We'll order PSI immediately returnable in four weeks. And we will also have a briefing on after you get the PSI six weeks from now and then eight weeks from now, we will have sentencing. We'll get you the exact dates uh, in a scheduling order. Is there a motion on behalf of the state? Your Honor, the state would move to have the court uh, revoke the defendant's bail and remand him into custody uh, pending sentencing. 
Bail is revoked, bond is discharged, and the defendant is remanded to the custody of the Hennepin County Sheriff. Anything further? All right. Thank you. We're adjourned. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Well, you should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and. All right, y'all, please click that thumbs up. Let's keep going. Oh, let me back this up. Um, the prosecution is doing a, a really solid job and, and using the video in a way that engages the jury. We saw you standing there with your hands on your head for a while, correct? Correct. What was going through your mind during that time period? Uh, uh, disbelief. Thank you. Okay. Why guilt? Um, if I would have just not taken the bill, this could have been avoided. Prosecutors are leading the witnesses through the video and allowing them to testify as to what happened, what they saw. And I think that has a great uh, and strong impact on the jury because they can sort of place themselves there. I feel helpless. I don't have a mama either, but I understand him. It's just um, uncalled for. I just want to point out how unusual it is for police officers to be testifying against each other. Usually the officers band together and there's kind of, you know, blue wall of silence. That has really been a different situation here. That in no way, shape or form is anything that um, uh, is by policy, is not part of our training, and it is certainly not part of our ethics or our values. After reviewing all of the facts and evidence of the case, uh, I can state with a high degree of medical certainty that George Floyd did not die from a primary cardiac event and he did not die from a drug overdose. Yes, a healthy person subjected to what Mr. Floyd was subjected to would have died as a result of what he was subjected to. And in terms of manner of death, you found then and do you stand by today? that the manner of death for Mr. Floyd was, as you would call it, homicide. Yes, I would still classify it as a homicide today. George, he would always be upon our mom. He was a big mama's boy. I felt that Derek Chauvin was justified, was acting with objective reasonableness, following Minneapolis Police Department policy and current standards of law enforcement and his interactions with Mr. Floyd. How would you classify the manner of death? So this is one of those cases where you have so many conflicting um, different manners, and you put all of those together it's very difficult to say which of those is the most accurate. So I would fall back to undetermined. You're not going to get beat up or nothing. Did you record what his blood pressure was at that time? Yes, it was 216 over 160. Had a history of hypertension and had not been taking his medication. There was a crowd, and uh, I guess the crowd was becoming more loud and aggressive. A lot of yelling across the street. Did that cause you any concern? Uh, concern for the officer's safety, yes. Uh, I will invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege today. All right, does anyone uh, promise anything or threaten you in any way to keep you from testifying? No promises or threats, Your Honor.
go ahead and move on to the next video. Members of the jury, I understand you have a verdict. Again, I want to remind the people that don't look at this as a black and white thing. Look at this as we are all Americans. There is a clear difference with how we are, we are treating law-abiding citizens and how we treat officers of the law on the side of the government. Those are the two separate sides. And I don't believe that we're treating those sides fairly when it comes to when these people commit crimes, we do not treat them the same. And that's been an ongoing battle for a very long time. And that's the thing that has to happen is that huge gap has to come closed. There shouldn't even be a gap at this point. If you break the law, everybody should be held accountable in the same way. As a matter of fact, I personally believe that in an officer of the law who was sworn, who was sworn to uphold the law, breaks the law, should actually be treated more harshly as opposed to our citizens. Because you've sworn an oath to the government and to the people. This man, along with others, have acted in a way that caused one of our citizens to be dead at this point. Regardless of what people feel like he did, right or wrong, that should have been debated in court. A simple thing to do if you got four to five people who are apprehending one individual. And matter of fact, we also have to ask this question. And I want to remind you guys, I'm not against police officers. Our, I support our good law abiding officers. This was not a law abiding situation. These officers did not follow the law, which is why the law is proving that they're going to do jail time based on their criminal actions. Okay. If this man did something so bad and you have four to five people, six people, in this case, police officers trying to apprehend one man and they can't apprehend one man properly. They can't bring in one man without killing this man, without causing this man to die. Then something is wrong. If all of those adults can't bring in one person, something is wrong. I probably could have brought that man in by myself. You have that many people that can't bring in one man. Then you know what that means to me? We're wasting a whole lot of man hours in police officers because apparently they too weak and too scared to be able to bring a man in by force without killing him. It just doesn't seem like, and, and it makes me wonder, and I, and I don't mean to be so disrespectful, but I gotta say this, and it makes me wonder, how many monkeys does it take to screw in a light bulb? And I ask this, how many police officers in Minneapolis does it take to arrest one man? We're not talking about a group of people like our women, shout out to the women, and I mean no disrespect, we're not talking about five women trying to apprehend this tall, muscular guy. We're talking about grown men who are used to handling grown men and criminals in a forceful way. And you mean to tell me four to five of them could not bring a man in without causing him to die like that? At least four people. That is a problem. That is a huge problem. If you ask me, that seems like a big old waste. The fact that we could potentially have four ex-police officers that are going to go to jail for a very long time and George Floyd, who is never coming back. At least five individuals who are going to be out of our society because of this thing called incompetence. Sometimes common sense can get you to a goal. And if you ask me, nobody reacted with common sense.
I don't I, I can't ask for our citizens to go over there and go push that man off of his neck. I can't ask that because that could cause them to get shot potentially. I can't ask the people to do that. But what else are we supposed to do besides film it? I can't ask for our people to attack officers. That's never going to end good. But I can ask of our officers to do better by the people that pay your fucking bills. Now that I can do. If my tax dollars are paying your salary and you sign up to get my tax dollars, then I think that you owe it to the people to do your job properly that don't put us in harm's way. That can't be debated. We can't have this totalitarian government. I think that's how you say the word. I, I could be wrong, but y'all can check me on that. But we can't have this type of thing where we're under tyranny against people that we pay. That's never right. They should be working with us to help eliminate crime, to help get these situations to a reasonable resolve, get them to court. If it's so bad what they did, then get them to court the best way that you can. I saw this man draw no guns, no weapons. Why can't four grown, full-fledged individual men bring that man into jail? Absolutely ridiculous. It's despicable, and it makes the good police officers look really bad. And I say that again. It makes the good ones look bad. It reflects on us all, because guess what? Just the same way that I say when my people that look just like me do bad things, it makes us all look bad. And I understand that. I understand the stereotypes. Police should also understand the stereotypes. And that's where we have to come together. Please, somebody say that in the chat. We have to come together. Work together to be better. Not only for us, but for our world, for our children, before this thing blows up in our face. And that's not what any of us want. I like to sleep peacefully at night. And I like to be able to know that I can go see my daughter. We can go hang out, go get something to eat, be cool, and ain't got to worry about a whole lot. And I would hope that a lot more of us want peace. Justice in peace. We get justice in court, and I want peace in the streets. That's all I ask. And I thank you guys so much for listening to me with an open mind and an open heart. So from my heart to yours, thank you guys so much for listening. But this story is definitely far from over. Thank you.